んだ How's it going, Chip Tribe? It's me, Chips, here, and guys, Banjo Kazooie. If you're a younger viewer, there's a good chance you have no idea what this game is. Maybe you've heard a bunch of people begging for this bear and bird combo to be in Smash, and sidebar, I don't mean to break the illusion, but I write these and record these months in advance, so as far as I know, they could have already been revealed. But any older viewers will know that this is a classic for the N64. It was one of the first 3D platformers, and while it was largely overshadowed by Mario 64, because, well, it's freaking Mario 64, many fans believe that it is a more refined entry in the genre. Now, I never had an N64 as a kid. It was a little before my time, and by that I mean this game is literally older than I am, so I have no nostalgic attachment to it. In fact, I didn't get a chance to actually play it until about a year ago, and I absolutely fell in love, so let's get right into it. The game opens with the main villain, the evil witch Gruntilda, fishing for compliments from her magic pot. She asks it if she's the most beautiful person in the world, but he says nope. That honor goes to a young bear named Tootie, who just so happens to be Grunty's neighbor. Grunty decides to kidnap Tootie and use a machine to steal all of her prettiness. Tootie's outside, talking to a mole named Bottles when Grunty shows up on her broom and swipes her. Her older brother Banjo and his friend Kazooie, the bird, are inside sleeping and wake up to all the racket. Bottles fills them in on what just went down, and Banjo and Kazooie go off to Grunty's lair to rescue Tootie. It's a super simple premise, but it does its job well. Earlier I compared this game to Mario 64, but while they do share a lot of similarities in their gameplay, there are some key differences that make Banjo different and, in my opinion, better. For starters, this game is not a simple 3D platformer. It is what people call a collectathon platform. That's because if you took all the collectibles in the game and laid them out in a line, they would probably reach to the moon and back. What, you thought I was going to say 26 miles? I think you're underestimating the sheer number of things there are to pick up in this game. There are a total of 9 levels in the game, each of which has 10 golden jigsaw pieces called jiggies in them. Seems pretty tame so far. There's also 100 golden notes to find in each level. Alright. There's also a hidden witch switch that unlocks a jiggy in the hub world for an extra 10 jiggies. There's also five weird aliens called Jinjos that give you a jiggy when you find them all. Two golden honeycomb pieces to increase your health. Oh, you thought that was all? Nope! Eggs uses ammunition, feathers to let you fly, crystal skulls for this wiz wizard named Mumbo, presents for these sad bears, worms to feed this eagle, acorns for this dumb squirrel, and I need them all. Now this may seem intimidating, but you don't need to collect everything. In fact, if you just want to see the credits, you can skip a good chunk of it. But honestly, getting it all really isn't that hard. I'm usually not the completionist type, but I've played this game two times so far, and both times I found myself just naturally wanting to complete it as I go. The levels are super fun to explore, there's only one instance in the whole game where you have to backtrack to an older level to get something, which I personally like. And whenever you pick up a Jiggy, this super satisfying jingle plays. How could you not want to find every last one of them? Plus, you unlock some pretty sweet things at the end for getting it all, so I think it's pretty worth it. Another thing that makes this game so fun to play is its charm. All the writing is genuinely funny, from Kazooie and Bottle's intense rivalry to Grunty constantly shouting insults at you in rhyme as you traverse her lair hub world. And side note, Grunty's lair is the best hub world in any game ever, come at me. It feels sort of Monty Python-esque if you're familiar with that, and I couldn't help but laugh at some of the crazy things that people say. This game is also literally overflowing with memorable characters. Of course you have your obvious ones like Banjo, Kazooie, Bottles, Grunty, and Mumbo, all of which are great, but Rare, the developers of the game, took it a step further and made every single side character just as memorable as the last. And that's really saying something when everything is a side character. The Jiggies? Characters. Jinjos? Characters. These Pots? characters, this cactus character, this literal bucket that you take a dump in character, this camel that you drive from his home by physically and emotionally abusing him, he's got a whole level named after him. Everything in this game has their own personality and I love them all. 
The characters aren't voice acted, but instead talk with a series of a few pitch changing sounds. It's super silly and endearing, and it actually sounds pretty good on the older hardware, so that was a smart choice right there. But how have I not talked about the worlds that these characters inhabit? As I said before, there are nine in total, and each one is super memorable and oozing with charm. My personal favorite is the last one, called Click Clock Wood. You visit the same little area in four different seasons, and the things you do in one season affect what happens in the next. It's by far the longest level, but I like it because it really tests everything you've learned throughout the game. Also, the music in the spring section is tight! Actually, now that I mention it, the music throughout the whole game is great. It was written by a man named Grant Kirkhope, and it perfectly fits the silly tone of the game, and it sounds fantastic. But I haven't talked about one of the most important aspects of a game, how it plays. All the controls are great, and moving around the world is super fun and easy. The bear and bird combo have several moves to help them traverse the lands and fight enemies. You start off with a jump and this weird flutter thing that acts as a double jump, as well as a Mario style backflip to jump higher. Uh, you also have some standard punches and pecks to fight with, but in most levels you can find the mole bottles that I mentioned earlier, and he will teach you some new moves and abilities, most of which involve Kazooie. You can make her walk around instead of banjo to go faster and climb steep hills, fly around, stuff like that. God, this game is just so dang fun. I'm pretty sure I had a smile on my face from the moment I started playing to the moment I sent Grunty tumbling from her tower. Oh, uh, spoilers, I guess. But you know what? All this collecting has made me want to go on my own adventure. Hey, Richard, you haven't done much this episode. Get over here. Can you fit in a backpack? That's right. We're going on a collect-a-thon. Six and a half hours later. <sighs> Oh, <sighs> alright, we're back, let's see, what do we manage to collect, um, alright, uh, a lot of trash, cleaning up the streets I guess, good, 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 what else, uh, bag of chips, ooh, I'll have that now actually, uh, some rocks, I don't even know why you bother picking that up, but, uh, alright, whatever, uh, let's see, I don't even know what this is, probably not important, and, uh, what else did you, oh, oh, Hey guys, it's me, Chips, here. I uh, just wanted to come in at the end and say thank you once again for watching this new episode of the Chip Tide Show. This is one of my favorite games, so it was a lot of fun to, uh, you know, play it again and talk about it here. If you enjoyed, as always, uh, you know, make sure to let me know what you thought by leaving a comment, even if you didn't enjoy. Do that anyway. And, uh, you know, subscribe and hit that bell if you want to keep updated on when the new videos are coming out. It should be every three weeks, uh, I think. But you can follow me on Twitter to, you know, make sure I'll keep you posted up there. But I will see you in the next episode where we pick up from this cliffhanger here. And I will see you then. But until then, don't forget to take it easy.